let's get things moving with absolute pinpoint precision. Oh no, hang on, here comes a shameless plug. Let's say you've got a website that you want to show people. Here's a pretty good one, and I highly recommend that you check out brightcarbon.com for loads of great presentation and e-learning services, masterclasses and resources. OK, plug over. It's great to be able to show it full screen, so that it's really easy to see all of the details, like where to click for the blog, free resources, weekly events and should you need help, lots of great services. Sorry, sorry, that's just naked commercialism, I'll try to stop. Anyway, that's great. But then if you want to tell more of a story, now that your audience have seen it, you might want to link it down onto a monitor, and then talk about how the strategy to rid the world of poor presentations is to get the website out to people through Google rankings and word of mouth. Okay, fair enough, but now pause and think about how that's been done. You've got a full screen image that then shrinks down to precisely fit onto the monitor. Getting it into exactly the wrong position could be achieved by trial and error but I suspect that you don't have time for that. Instead, there are much quicker ways to make this happen. If you want to move an object into a specific position, say the area outlined by this dotted red box, then you use the motion path animations. Click on the object you want to move, go to the animations tab on the ribbon and choose add animation. If you scroll down the list, you'll see the motion paths hidden away at the bottom there. Not sure why, as they're my favorite type of animation. Just as a side note, if you have a favourite PowerPoint animation, let us know by emailing info at brightcarbon.com. Ha! Sorry, what am I saying? If. Anyway, choose a simple line. One of the tricks to motion paths is keeping them nice and simple, and you'll see you get a line added to your box. The green end of it is where the centre of your shape will start to move from. The red endpoint is where the centre of your shape will move to, and the black dotted line shows the path that it will take. Now, in PowerPoint 2013 and later, you have an advantage here, because you get a ghosted image of the final end position of your shape, so it's actually pretty easy to drag the red end of the motion path into the right position. But as you'll see in a moment, this doesn't always help you if you want to do something a bit more complicated, so keep listening. For those in PowerPoint 2010 or earlier, you just have to make a guess at where to put it. However, if you think about it, this is all about the centre point of your shape and knowing where it is and where it needs to be. And the motion path shows you that centre point by default with the green start point. So if you duplicate your shape with the motion path applied to it and then position the duplicate where you want the shape to end up, the green start to the motion path shows you the center point of the shape in the place where you want it to be. So if you match up the red end of the first motion path with the green start of the duplicate motion path, you know that the shape will now move into the right position. Delete the duplicate shape, put it in show mode, and you're ready to go. Really quick and easy. Loyal viewers using PowerPoint 2013 and later might think that this is a bit of a long way around. And you're right, until you have to change the size of the shape too. Because with the motion path preview, you don't get any preview of how much the object might grow or shrink. So you end up playing the same guessing game. Say for example, you want to shrink the box down onto this monitor. First, you need to know how much to shrink it by. So Duplicate your shape and resize it to fit on the screen, using the little grab handles on the edges. If you press the Shift key while doing this, you'll preserve the aspect ratio of your shape, so it doesn't get stretched out of proportion and become useless. Then you're going to use a bit of elementary school math to figure out how much the shape has to shrink by, so right click on the second shape and choose Size and Position to see what size it is. Then click on the other shape to see what size it is and simply divide the end size by the initial size to get the growth ratio. And of course, you know that 1.37 divided by 2.74 is... Yes, well done at the back, 0.5 or 50%. Now, add a grow shrink animation to your original shape. Then go to the animation pane and double click on the yellow grow shrink animation to change the size. The default is to grow by 150%, so click on the drop-down to change it to your desired percentage, in this case 50%.
Press enter at this point to lock in the amount, not the OK button. And then once locked, you can press OK. Then right click on the emphasis animation and choose with previous to make it happen at the same time as the motion path. So you're now left with a shape that shrinks down by the right amount and then use the motion path positioning trick to line up the red end point of the first motion path with the green start point of the second motion path to make the shape move to the correct place. Delete the second shape and when you put it into show mode it moves and shrinks into the perfect position. Oh, the precision!